What's going on guys? Bob Roach from RoachTechnology.com here with the first video of a new series I'm starting called Quick Hackintosh Tips. Basically what this series is going to cover is, well, pretty much what the title suggests. There's going to be quick little tips that will either help you get a fully functional system or some cool things you can do once you have a fully functional system. So this being the first episode of the series, I figured that I would cover something that I get questions on every single day, something that pretty much everybody has to go through in order to have a fully functional system, and that, as you could probably guess if you haven't read the title by now, is multi -beast. Now there are different things you can do to whereas you won't have to use MultiBeast. You could install your own Kex or kernel extensions by ways of uh, programs like Kext Helper or just downloading random Kex from the internet. However, MultiBeast is definitely the best solution, I believe. It's basically just a one-stop shop for everything you'll need to get your system up and running. So if you don't have MultiBeast already, then go ahead and head over to the Tony Mac forums uh, right here. Go to the Click Downloads. Actually, you know what? I'll go ahead and walk you through it. Go to TonyMacX86.com. And once you're on the home page, you want to come over here and click Downloads. Now, once you log in and all that good stuff, you'll see it's actually right here. Multi-Beast Lion Edition. Obviously, if you're on Snow Leopard, then you'll want to get the Snow Leopard. But um, just know that Lion is much more hardware friendly nowadays now that the OS X, or really the Mac and the PC hardware are very similar nowadays. So Macs are also sporting the same processors, which is why the Hackintosh works so well nowadays. However, I definitely, like I said, I definitely recommend running Lion. But anyway, back to Multi-Beast. Now, basically what this is, is just a checklist of kecks that you could install. So I'm going to go ahead and go over some things in MultiBeast. I'm not going to go over everything, simply because if you click on something, it will give you a description of what it does. But um, I just get a lot of questions about people asking uh, what they should install for their hardware. So hopefully this video will just help you guys make that decision. Uh, you might have to play with it a couple times. Uh, just some warning though, if you install something that's not compatible with your system, or some kecks that kind of bump each other's heads, your system will probably panic and you probably will have to reinstall your operating system. But honestly, that's a pretty good learning experience because as you learn what doesn't work with your system you kind of figure out why and from there you just you expand your knowledge base of this stuff so it's always good to sort of install bad things because then you know for future reference that that doesn't work so I'm just gonna go ahead and dive right in here I'm just gonna go ahead and cover like a lot of the main things the first one up here is easy bees now easy bees is sort of the one-stop shop if you check this and you click continue you, your system uh, based on your hardware should be fully functional except for network and audio and that's simply just because of the variety of motherboards that have a variety of different Ethernet and audio chipsets. But we'll get a little more into that later. Now with that said, I probably don't recommend EasyBeast to everybody. I would go ahead and check out the Tony Mac DSDT database. And if your motherboard is listed there, then I would definitely recommend using a DSDT instead. Simply just because I believe that's the best solution. The EasyBeast install here really isn't specific to any sort of hardware. It's sort of just like, you know, a general parachute sort of thing. Whereas if you have a DSDT, it's specifically meant for your motherboard and therefore things will probably probably work better for you. But if you really, if it's your first install, you just want to sort of experiment around, maybe you don't want to get into all these kecks yet, then I definitely recommend uh, giving EasyBeast a shot. But like I said, you will not have audio or ethernet drivers, but those can be installed right down here. So there's really no worry. So moving on, next is the user DSDT install. I'll get a little bit more into this in a future video, but for now, just know that, like I said, it's very, it's motherboard specific. So if your motherboard is in the database, I recommend downloading and installing that user DSDT. I would, like I said, I will show you guys how to do that in a future video. System utilities, this is just repairing permissions on the volume. Honestly, I don't really do this. It's not a bad idea, but um, if you do this, every time you install something, it'll just take like a few extra seconds to like, you know, a minute or so after you install every kex. So it's not a bad thing to do at all, but it's definitely not required. Moving down to drivers and bootloaders, this is where everything gets very fun. So we have kext and enablers, which is basically sort of like in the Windows world, a driver. And we have bootloaders. Now under bootloaders, I'll start with this simply because it's very easy. There's only one here and it's Chimera. There are other bootloaders such as Chameleon, which Chimera is basically like a branch of, as you, actually as you can see right here, this says Macman's branch of Chameleon 2.0. So they are very similar. Basically what the bootloader does is it lets you boot from your OS X installation right from the hard drive so when you hit the power button on your computer, as long as the hard drive that OS X is installed to is first in the boot priority, then your system will boot right up without you even having to touch it. That's basically what the bootloader does. There's a ton more to it. There's a lot of behind the scenes things that the bootloader is responsible for, but I'm really not going to get into it simply because, well number one, I don't fully 100% know everything that the bootloader does, and number two, for general purposes, you don't really have to know. Moving down here to audio, be sure when you're checking out your 
motherboard, say for example you bought your motherboard on Newegg, go ahead and check out the audio chipset that it's running. A lot of motherboards, probably the most common one I've seen, use the ALC889 audio chipset. So if that's the case and you want to come down here to Realtek ALC8XX. So for me for example, if I'm using a DSDT, then you'll have to install these two which is definitely what I recommend. It's definitely like the easiest solution, like I said, using a DSDT. But as I said earlier, if you do use a DSDT, you won't have audio, so this is how you enable your audio. However, if you don't use a DSDT, which honestly, I'm not sure off the top of my head, uh, you'd have to come down here and non-DSDT. Like I said, I'm not quite sure, but I believe it's these two, maybe these three. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't done a non-DSDT install in a very long time, so I am kind of rusty on that. But as you can see, there's many different chipsets. There's ALC898, 892, etc uh, etc et so definitely be sure that you research the motherboard that you have and look at the audio chipset that will be your fastest way to determine what audio kicks that you'll need so moving down to disk here you just have different options uh, you probably won't need many of these but basically if you have a solid state I definitely recommend that you install trim enabler oftentimes on a fresh install some of your icons up here especially if you're using like a solid state they'll often appear like they're a USB drive sort of like this icon right here if that's the case, then simply installing this will fix that. If you're using a SATA controller card to maybe boost the speed of your solid state, say for example if you have a Marvel controller, that's where you'd want to use this third party SATA. Whereas you see, uh, this is actually the card I have here, the ASM1061 SATA card. So that actually gives my solid state better performance than my onboard SATA 3 controllers, simply because they're the Marvel SATA controllers. So there's many different things here. I'm not going to go over all these, but they basically do sort of the same thing, just for different connections. And moving down here, you know, there's graphics, there's ATI and NVIDIA. If you have these sorts of cards, these are where you enable those. Miscellaneous, coming down here, we have fake SMC and fake SMC plugins. If you use something like iStat menus like I do up here, in order to have all these monitors, you have to install the motherboard uh, the motherboard plugins right here. And say, for example, like me, you have a Radeon card, then you want to install this, so you'll be able to see you know, the memory usage and things like that of your card. But also down here through uh, miscellaneous, you have USB 3.0, a uh, patch for CMOS resets if you're not using a DSDT. Uh, null CPU power management. Like I said, I'm not going to go over all these because this video is actually getting a little bit longer than I originally anticipated, but uh, definitely go ahead and read these if you're lost. But a lot of these, the names are pretty self explanatory. So moving down here to network, once again, if you're using a DSDT, you won't have it. Based on my experience, most people have the Realtek 81XX Ethernet controller. I'm not exactly sure of the number of mine, but I know that um, it falls under this category. Once again, you can check all this information up when you go to buy your motherboard. It should say right there what Ethernet controller you're running. So there's different kecks for different Ethernet controllers. Pretty simple. We've already gone over bootloaders, so once again, that's just Chimera. Moving down here to customization, a lot of these you don't really need anymore. These uh, I've never had to install any of these while I was online. I've always been fully booted into 64-bit with graphics enabler set to yes. So there you go, not really much to worry about there. There's an instant menu for your bootloader, so it does boot right up without any delay. Generate CPU states. I believe the DSDT adds these by default, so if you use a DSDT, you won't have to do that. SSDT, this is very important if you're running a second generation uh, Core i7, Core i5 processor. Uh, if you update to 10.7.4, Apple actually changed their CPU power management, so therefore your processor will only be clocked at, I believe, 1.6 GHz, which is about half of the frequency. So if you're running like a Core i5 or a Core i7 Sandy Bridge computer, then you'll definitely want to uh, install these when you update to 10.7.4 and beyond. And moving down to system definitions, the only one I've ever really used is Mac Pro. On my system, I can use 5.1 because I'm running first generation. I believe there is things you can do to get this to work on Sandy Bridge hardware, but most people should just be fine with the Mac Pro 3.1 system definition, so just go ahead. And that should actually be installed by default if you use a DSDT, so you really don't have to worry about that. But you know, there are different system definitions, so based on your hardware, it may be closer to an iMac configuration. So you may just want to go ahead and experiment with different uh, iMac models to maybe get the most out of your hardware. So those are pretty much all the important things about Multibeast. This video wasn't necessarily a quick Hackintosh tip. However, I've, I feel that it really will help a lot of people out because I just get so many questions on Multibeast. Like I said in the beginning of this video, people are constantly asking, uh, what should I install on Multibeast for my hardware? Well, Multibeast actually does sort of walk you through this. And like I said, it's all right down here. So I know, I know, I know most of you people don't like to read because trust me, I don't either. But this is extremely useful information down here. And a lot of this stuff is actually a lot easier than uh, you guys might think it is on the surface. So there you guys go. There's a somewhat moderately quick overview of Multibeast. I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. Also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and 
at Roach Technology on Twitter. I hope you guys got something out of this video. I'll try to make the next video in the series a little more quick, but like I said, there's lots of good information here, so I hope you guys get something out of it, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank <laughs> you.